flying low over the Black Sea in an aircraft that can reach close to twice the speed of sound. An RAF Typhoon could cross this entire 730 mile stretch of water in little more than half an hour. These planes have two jobs here, to intercept Russian planes that enter or come close to NATO airspace, but also to deter them from doing that in the first place. So we've had one live scramble, and that was at the beginning of the operation. And, uh, but since then, um, we have been just really, our training flying acts as present, and we are there to deter that, that threat as well, um, just from being airborne. And because we're flying you know, most days, and that means we're all always delivering that, that presence uh, alongside our, our MiG-21s, uh, the Romanian counterparts. The real scrambles may be rare at the moment, but the squadron needs to keep in practice. The planes are flying most days of the week, often running through the full drill for a scramble. We can just be, you know, sitting down in front of the computer doing work or, um, you know, or watching TV, and all of a sudden that siren goes. So instantly it's just, right, into training mode, as in this is what I've done loads and loads of times in training. I mean, the adrenaline is always soaring high. It doesn't even matter if it's a practice scramble, if we're just doing it for training. For you know, a live one, it really just focuses the mind and then you are just concentrating on making sure that we just stick to what we do every single time. The typhoon can be in the air in less than 10 minutes. And once its wheels leave the ground, you can see why the Romanians want this aircraft to support their Soviet-era MiG fighters. In a performance takeoff like this, the Typhoon can reach 40,000 feet in just a few seconds. The power is incredible in this thing, but also the ability to just throw the aircraft around carefree. And they talk about it as carefree handling because the computers does all the work for us. So if we want to go that way, we just roll and pull. But it's not just for show. Maneuvers like this are part of this aircraft's military job. Air policing is a peacetime defensive mission, and it's policing in the same way that perhaps a policeman would patrol the streets of any big city in the UK. We patrol and police the airspace, but it's part of a, a wider, continuous NATO mission of air policing all of NATO airspace, and a mission that's been going on for decades. The one time on this deployment that the Typhoons have had to head for real to an intercept, it was with a Russian Qt aircraft flying close to NATO airspace. The RAF says the intelligence gathering plane was tracked by Typhoons flying at close to supersonic speed, though the coupe never came into visual range. But the pilots can never be quite sure what any flight will hold. You were up for what? hour and a half? Uh, yeah, exactly. It was about um, an hour and a half. How was um, it? Yeah, really good. Really successful day, yeah. We had um, we took part in Exile Sarmis, uh, so it was a close air support, uh, or providing close air support to the Army, one rifle, so they've had an Exile um, just up to the north, actually. Um, so really, really fantastic. It was incredible talking to, you know, UK JTAC in Romania uh, on the ground, sprinting uh, through the hills, so, and I was providing him, you know, simulated weapons and support, so, really uh, good. And you've got a little bit of a sweat on, how physically demanding is that? Um, there's a lot of the profiles that I was doing um, required quite a lot of uh, G-force just to position, and, and of course with this thing you can, you know, really easily pull 9G, so, yeah, it's pretty physically demanding, but, I mean, there's a bit of the uh, Scottish skin having to cope with this heat as well. Once the jets are back on the ground, they need to be checked and readied for their next flight as quickly as possible. Quick reaction alert is a round-the-clock job. This may be a mission that is all about air power, but of the 150 people taking part in Operation Biloxi, just six are actually going into the air. When they're back on the ground, time is of the essence. Quick reaction alert is a round-the-clock job, so the Typhoon and its air-to-air -air missiles need to be checked and made safe after each flight. The aircraft is ready to be able to take off in a matter of minutes, if or when a call comes. In all, there are four RAF Typhoons here, 
and even when there aren't any real scrambles, these planes are flying most days. And that means regular maintenance is needed to keep them airworthy. How much work do they need doing to them on a, on a daily and weekly basis just to keep them going? Uh, to keep them going, it can, it can, some of it can be quite lengthy. I mean, especially here with the, um, the heat and that kind of thing. It kind of, and these are all the older style of jets. These are the tranche ones. But it's, it's standard preventative stuff most of the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of stuff to do with like tyres and that kind of thing. The tyres can, especially in the runways out here, they're a bit more, they're not quite to the standard that we have back at yeah. home. And I mean, you've, you've done Operation Shader as well mm -hmm. recently. So how does working on these, presumably it's not as intense? No, no, absolutely not. I say she does a lot more intense. Uh, there's a lot more, a lot more aircraft out in Shader as well. We were, we were working with six, seven aircraft when we were out in Shader, whereas we've only got four here. Working from an established airbase alongside NATO allies, there is already significant support infrastructure. In an emergency, Romanian search and rescue helicopters would be deployed. But the RAF isn't just relying on Romania for emergency response. This fire engine was brought by road and sea as an essential part of the capability needed for Opveloxi. Ken Horn is also essential, a reservist who across decades has served in war zones around the world with the mobile MET unit, providing detailed weather forecasts. Very vital because uh, where the pilots are going to fly, uh, there's not as many places to go if the weather really turns bad, so we give mission specific details and uh, obviously miss the thunderstorms and uh, other places where they go into fog, so quite important to make sure the aircraft get on the ground here and complete their mission. Normally, Gemma Douch spends her days working as a research scientist, but for four months she swapped the laboratory for the stores on Opbaloxi. This is her first deployment as an RAF reservist, working on a round-the-clock shift system to ensure 135 Expeditionary Air Wing have everything they need, when they need it, to deliver the mission. So we support all the um, st um, sections out here and we can range from a couple of pounds uh, high-vis belt to like a couple of million uh, assets for the typhoon. By assets, you mean spare parts? Yes, yeah. Those aircraft parts are essential, just as each part of the team is, to keeping the air mission on track. But there is still part of the mission that is rooted on the ground. Called defence engagement, from hosting visits by school children to joining Romanian exercises and parades. Soft power being used to back up the hard power of the typhoons. You can do the air policing in isolation and you could say that that was going on, but without anyone seeing what is going on, it doesn't assure the other nations. So you need the second side of it, which is the defence engagement, to actually deliver the message that you're doing the work that you are doing. So it's, it's definitely vital. For many on Opbaloxi, this has simply moved their day-to-day -day work from Lossimuth to southern Romania. When it's over, they will return to delivering the same round-the-clock readiness for the UK. The reason this mission is here, not just in Romania, but in Constanta, that reason is behind me, the Black Sea. It is where Russian and Romanian airspace meet. But perhaps more pointedly, about 250 miles that way is Crimea, four years ago taken over by the old Soviet master, Russia. 21st century Constanta feels much like many towns across Europe. Basking in the sunshine, it's a big draw for tourists and also home to the busiest port on the Black Sea. But it still bears some scars of modern history, nearly half a century under a brutal communist dictatorship that ended just under 30 years ago. Romania turned its back on Russia and the Warsaw Pact and rapidly tied itself to NATO and the European Union. Memories of the communist era, when Moscow called the tune, were reawakened four years ago by Russia's annexation of Crimea. And that's why the people of Constanta now have the RAF flying from their local airport. Are you scared of Russia or do you no, think... No, for what? I'm not scared. Everybody is a bit scared, but... We need protection, we are poor on planes, so we need a lot of protection from the NATO, from everybody. Are you actually scared of Russia? I don't think that it, it, is, it, is, it is a threat to us. I think it's like uh, the US and the Russia is not in between.
Romania is investing heavily in its forces, spending billions of euros on new equipment like F-16s to join its MiG fighters, putting it on course to be the sixth NATO member to reach the target of spending 2% of national income on defence. It's not that Romania can't or isn't doing its own air policing, but these aircraft are a relic of the Cold War, designed more than 60 years ago, last built more than 30 years ago. And that's why they want some extra air power from NATO and right now from Britain. This is the second year in a row that four RAF typhoons have been based here on quick reaction alert for NATO, flying not just over Romania, but the Black Sea and on occasions Bulgaria. It is a, a, a hugely capable, very modern aircraft that's extremely good at this role. And it's the role that you know, is almost identical to what we do in the UK and in the Baltic. So our guys are very familiar with this air policing role. But the reality is the typhoons have only had to scramble for real to an intercept once in almost two months to a Russian spy plane that came close but didn't actually enter NATO airspace. Perhaps we can take it as a measure of success that there have been so few scrambles. But it could equally be seen that you don't really need to be here, you, that, that you're arguing you're deterring when actually there's nothing to deter. I mean, this is an extremely important region economically. And so I think if we, we can look at the statistics and see that the UK and then we're replace, we're, uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force comes after us, that presence of NATO partners here in Romania appears to show there are less uh, requirements to scramble. And thus, I think it's reasonable to take from that that uh, we are having a positive effect by being here. The deterrence isn't just coming from air policing. NATO ships are being deployed to the Black Sea, thousands of troops stationed in Eastern Europe, and typhoons on Opoloxy have been taking part in their exercises. Russia looks at this and says, this is provocation by NATO, while NATO says Russia is provoking. Aren't we just stoking a Cold War here? I think uh, NATO is extremely clear that this is a defensive mission. I've, been tried, I've tried to be extremely clear that this is a peacetime mission. You know, we are only four aircraft. That's not a huge fe um, force that could you know, ever be construed as being offensive. Us going training with other nations, I think that's something we do all the time and is an important part of being in an alliance, and we've been in alliances for many, many years. Britain's contribution to NATO's beefed-up presence in Eastern Europe is likely to stay high. In part, that's political. Brexit has left the government even more keen to be seen as a heavyweight defence contributor to protect its global influence. Mm.